Hello, ladies and gentlemen. It's your friendly neighborhood root beer here, and I'm looking at question 24 on our 2019 Pascal. If P, Q, R, and S are digits, how many of the 14-digit positive integers of the form 88663311 P, Q, R, S, or 8 are divisible by 792? Okay, 792, not the, the most common number to come across. Okay. They're asking us for divisibility. I think the best thing probably to do is break 792 into its simpler factors, its powers of prime factors. Um, I can already see with 7, 9, and 2, um, they add up to 18. So I'm going to get a, a factor of 9, certainly. Uh, there might be other factors. So first things first, let's take a look at 792. How is it made? Uh, there could even be a factor of 27 in there. I'm not entirely sure. I can definitely say 792 is 9 times. A nice quick divisibility rule for 9. Add up the digits. If they're divisible by 9, then the original number is 2. We're going to need divisibility rules for a question like this. So 9 times 88. Well, 88 is, of course, 8 times 11. So that's not too bad. So I'm going to leave uh, the number written like this. Now, how do you tell if a number is divisible by 792? Well, if the number is divisible by 9, and by 8, and by 11, it'll have to be divisible by 792. Okay. So this gives us a plan, because there are quick rules to tell, based on the digits of the number, whether or not something's divisible by 9, or by 8, or by 11. And we want to satisfy all those conditions. So we'll go through those in a moment. Uh, but these divisibility rules are a good thing to know, because every once in a while, uh, they'll throw a question like this at you. And all we are told is you've got the digits of this number, this 14-digit number. And so knowing how the digits that are represented by the number relate to what the factors are is really good. There's, there's almost no other way to do this question. Well, I'll show you another way to do this question because I actually know two ways to do this question. Um, me and a colleague are going to do it, uh, or, uh, did it one way by looking at factors and, and different cases. But actually, uh, really recently, uh, a student at our enrichment program, we were going through this particular Pascal, pointed out another way to approach the question. So I'm going to show you both. They are a little different. Um, and so, you know, you don't have to mess around with divisibility rules that much if you want to try the other method. But, but I'm going to go through the way that I first thought of the question uh, when I first saw it. Okay. So what are the divisibility rules for 9? Well, as I said, if you add up all the digits and they're divisible by 9, then the number is divisible by 9. Right? So what have we got? Well, we've got 8, 8, I think it was 6, 6, 3, 3, 1, 1, P, Q, R, S, and then I think it was 4, 8, or 8, 4. 6, 6, 3, 3. Okay, good, good, good. So that is divisible by 9. Exactly if 9 divides 8 plus 8 plus 6 plus 6 plus 3 plus 3 plus 1 plus 1 plus P plus Q plus R plus S plus 4 plus 8. Now, the 8 and the 1, they're divisible by 9, so the rest of them must be divisible by 9. 8 and the 1, the 6s and the 3s, they all match up. And then what we really need is 9 divides P plus Q plus r, plus s, plus 4, plus 8. Now, 4 and 8 is 12. So we could replace this with 12. Okay. But uh, we could also say, well, subtract 9 from there, and you'll get plus 3. So 9 needs to divide p plus q plus r plus s plus 3. What does that tell me? That tells me if I just look at 9 plus, uh, uh, if I just look at uh, p plus q plus r plus s, it needs to look like 9 times something plus 6, because then that plus 6 pairs with this plus 3, and we're definitely divisible by 9. Okay, so what possibilities could I have for P, Q, R, and S? Well, they're all positive, well, not necessarily positive, they're all non-negative integers. So it could be 6, but it couldn't be something like negative 3, which is a multiple of 9, plus 6. It's negative 9 plus 6. But we can't have negative things for, for a sum of non-negative numbers. But we could have 15. Uh, just go up by, by 9s each time. Because, you know, 15 plus 3 is 18. That's divisible by 9. Uh, 24. 
uh, 33. Now, where's the limit on this? Well, at most, because these are single digits, the best they could all be is 9. So the best this sum could be is 36. So we don't really need to go any further. So these are my possibilities for what P plus Q plus R plus S is. All right. What's the next one? 8. How do you tell if a number is divisible by 8? Well, 8 is 2 to the 3. And you might know how to tell if, there's an, if, the, if a number is divisible by 2. What is, what is the last digit? It is, a, is it a 0, 2, uh, 4, 6, or 8? Okay. The way to tell if a number is divisible by 2 is if the last digit is divisible by 2, then the whole thing is divisible by 2. So that's, the, that's divisibility by 2, testing whether numbers are even or not. How about divisibility by 4? That's 2 to the power of 2. Okay. This one you might be familiar with, you might not be as familiar with, but if the last two digits are divisible by 4. So for example, 12, the last digit isn't divisible by 4, but the last two digits are. And so now I know confidently that 712 is divisible by 4 as well. Okay? And, you know, the reason this works is because, well, what is this? This is 700 plus 12. And anything times 100, this is 7 times 100, anything times 100, if it was 17, 12, it would be 1,700. 17 times 100, that's automatically divisible by 4 because 100 is divisible by 4, right? And so you just need to ask, is, is what's left over, the two, the tens and the units digits combined, are they also divisible by 4? Okay, so divisibility by 4, last two digits. How about divisibility by uh, 8? That's 2 to the 3. Well, it's the last three digits. So if the last three digits, so I know 512 is divisible by 8. So no matter what I add on here up front, I know that this whole number is still divisible by 8. So what are we asked about? We're asked at 88663311 PQRS48. So it's divisible by 8 if S48 is divisible by 8. But this is S times 100 plus 48. Now 48 is already divisible by 8. So we're really asking, does 8 divide S times 100? Now 100 has a factor of 4. So it's 4 times 25 times s. In order for me to get an 8 here, well, I can't get another 2 out of 25. I must have a factor of 2 in s. So s must be even. Okay, and that, that's it. As long as s is even, the number will end in three digits that taken together are divisible by 8, and the whole thing is divisible by 8. So I know s is even. I know p plus q plus r plus s has so many possibilities. Now, what about the last one? Divisibility by 11. What is the divisibility rule for being divisible by 11? And you might know some simple cases. You know, 77 is a multiple of 11, and it's the same number twice. But then there's something like 7, uh, 792 that's divisible by 11. And so somebody may have taught you, oh, the outside numbers have to equal the inside number for multiples of 3. Or sorry, for, not for multiples of 3, for three-digit numbers. But, of course, this isn't always the case. Now, really, uh, uh, what, what would be a quick example? Um, 902, for example, is divisible by 11. But if I take the two outside numbers and add them up, I don't get zero. Right? So the rule does break down a little bit. So what's the actual rule for divisibility by 11? For, so for divisibility by 11, there's lots of ways to say this. Uh, I prefer to say the alternating sum is a multiple of 11. But uh, other people will say, take the odd, not odd place digits, add them up. Take the even place digits, add them up. So we'll get 7 and we'll get 7. We'll get 9 and we'll get 9. We'll get 11 and we'll get 0. And if you take the difference, that's always going to be a multiple of 11. And you see, it even works over here. So if I had something um, particularly large, like uh, 3, 0, 8, 1, take the odd place digits, 1 and 0, take the even place digits, 8 and 3, add them up. doesn't have to be in any particular order. Take their difference, and I ask, is that a multiple of 11? If it is, great, then the original number was. If not, then the original number wasn't. So I know for a fact... 3081 isn't. But as soon as I change this 8 to a 9, 
then this 11 becomes a 12, and the 10 becomes an 11, and it is a multiple. In fact, we can get our calculator out, 3091 divided by 11 is tw uh, 281. So that's nice. So this is what we call the alternating sum, but it's a nice little divisibility rule by 11. It's very similar to the one for 9. So 11 divides 88663311 PQRS for 8 exactly if 11 divides the difference. So we'll take the alternating 8631PR4. I'll take that, uh, the even place uh, numbers, minus the odd place numbers. And you'll notice, because of the 8866 at the start, that very quickly cancels out and is irrelevant. That part cancels out with that part. And so what we really got is P plus R plus 4 minus Q minus R minus 8. Oh, sorry, this, this should be an S. So we've got P minus Q plus R minus S minus 4 must be a multiple of 11. Okay? So just like with the, uh, the multiple of 9 case, get a similar looking expression. Now, how can P, P minus Q plus R minus S uh, work here? Well, if it were 4, 4 minus 4 would definitely be 0. That's, that's a multiple of 11. Okay? But it could be... You know, it doesn't have to be. It could be 15, for example. 15, if this if this sum is 15, minus 4, that's a multiple of 11. Okay? Or, or 26, just go up by 11s. But we can also go down by 11s because we're subtracting numbers. If Q and S are that much bigger than P and R, we might get negative 7 or negative 18. Now, there's a limit to how far we can go, just like there was a limit when we were doing 6 all the way up to 33. The biggest P and R can be are both 9, and the smallest Q and S can be are 0. So the biggest this sum can be is 18. So there's no way to do 26. If P and R are 0 and Q and S are 9, the smallest this sum can be is negative 18. Okay. So let's just summarize our facts, which, you know, the, 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 we, we've been doing this question for a little while, but that's because I have been explaining the divisibility rules. So if you, if you knew your divisibility rules well, you'd probably be getting to this step about a minute into the question, maybe a minute or two, depending on how quickly you can do your calculations and how quickly you say, ah, must be divisibility rules. But uh, let's just recap what we've learned. So S must be even. P plus Q plus R plus S is one of a few possibilities. And P minus Q plus R minus S is one of another few possibilities. Okay. Now, what can I do? Well, I could take this and I could add it to this. And if I add it to this, the Qs will cancel out. The Ss will cancel out. I'll be left with two Ps and two Rs. And then, uh, well, it depends on what my sums are, what, what, what I'm saying my possibilities are over here. But for example, if I did 15, if P plus Q plus R plus S is 15, P minus Q plus R minus S is negative 7, that'd be a sum of 8. And then we could divide by 2 and get the sum of P plus R, which would be really handy because then I can take it back and say, oh, you used 15, Q and S must add up to 11. Right? You can't always do that. For example, if uh, P plus Q plus R plus S was 6 and P minus Q plus R minus S was minus 7, we'd get 2P plus 2R is minus 1. And then even though P and R are supposed to be integers, their sum would have to be negative a half. So we can only match evens up with evens and odds up with odds. Okay? But we do get some possibilities. So what can we do? P plus Q plus R plus S. And then what are the corresponding P minus Q plus R minus S possibilities? Then what is P plus R? What is Q plus S?
So we could have 6, and we could have 6 and negative 18. We could have 6 and, um, what was the other one? 4. Or we could have 15 and negative 7, or 15 and 15. Or we could have 24 and negative 18. Right? I'm only pairing up even ones with even ones and odd ones with odd ones. Okay. Now, how do I get PR? Add both the numbers up, divide by 2. So 6 plus negative 18, negative 12 divided by 2 is negative 6. Here you'll get 5, um, 4, 15 minus 7 is 8, divided by 2 is 4. Uh, 15 and 15, 15. Uh, negative, or 24 minus, ne uh, minus 18 would be 6, divided by 2 is 3. 14 here, uh, 26 divided by 2 is 13, and then 33 plus 18 is 48 divided by 2 is 24. Now, before I figure out my QSs, I can't have P and R add up to a negative number. Also, the best that they could both be is 9, so they can't add up to 24 either. So that certainly limits our possibilities. Now, what's Q and S? Well, what do I have to do to take P plus R and make 6? It could be 1 or 11, or 0, or 18. Oh, sorry, no, 21, 21. Uh, or 10, or 13 to 33 would be 20. And so again, we've got some things that just won't work. P plus S can't be that big. And that's it. These are my possibilities. There's only four cases to work out. Let's figure out how many ways to do this. How many ways can I pick P and R to add up to 5. Well, one of them could be 5 and 0, or we could have 4 and 1, or 3 and 2, or 2 and 3, or 1 and 4, or 0 and 5. So that's six possibilities, six different ways to pick P and R. Now, how about Q and S? Well, they have to add up to 1, but remember, S has to be even. We haven't used that fact yet. There's really only one way to make a sum of 1 where the s is even. Yes, I know 0, 1 would work for q and then s, but the s value would be odd, so we don't allow that. So any one of these possibilities can match up with any one of these possibilities. So in total, there's six different ways to make numbers here. So for example, just, just as a quick little double check, the number 8866 uh, let's say 2... One, three, zero, four, eight is a multiple of 792. And that's one of a few possibilities. Okay. Uh, what else did we have? Uh, P plus R is five. Again, you can list them all out. Anything goes with P and R because there's no restrictions on them. There's five cases there. Q and S uh, has to add up to 11. How many ways are there to do that? Well, let's focus on the S. The biggest it could be is 8. And every, since we go down by 2 to make even numbers, Q goes up by 2. We'll have 9, 2, and that's that's the best way we can make 11. So there's four cases there. So any five of these, any of these five can match up with any of these four. There's 20 different ways to make a multiple of 792 there. So 6, 20, so so far we're up to 26 different possibilities. How about P plus R is 15? And then Q plus S is 0. There's only one way to do that. But uh, P plus R being 15, well, it could be 9, 6, or 8, 7, or 7, 8, or 6, 9. You'll notice I'm writing these out in a very nice logical order going from highest to lowest p-value. There's four different possibilities there. Any of these four can match up with any of these one. So combined, they make four different multiples of 792. And our last case is p plus r is 14. q plus s adds up to 10. And again, s has to be even. So how many ways can we do this? Uh, we could have 2, 8, or 6. 6, 4, 
a two. Sadly, I can't have SB zero in this case. So that's four different cases. And up here we get nine five all the way up to five nine. Just one more case than we had up here. And that's 20. So we've got six plus 20 plus four plus 20. And that's a total of 50 possibilities. So there we go. It took a little while because I had to set up all the divisibility rules, but it's actually quite clean once you start working out these cases of P plus R uh, and uh, Q plus S, because other than S having to be even, you really have free range. Or sorry, yeah, free range or free reign? Free reign. Free reign is the expression. It's been a long day. So there we go, 50, and that's, um, what? what's our answer there? That's E. Okay. So that's the way uh, I and uh, uh, most people I know approach the question. But there's another way you can do it. Okay, and so this, and as I say, this was given to me. This is not out of my head. Uh, another student, uh, at, well, a student at our enrichment program, he, he, he mentioned this one when we were talking about, you know, can you think of other ways to do the question? So the way he approached it was he just found one multiple of 792 that ends with 48. And that's not the easiest thing to do, okay? Um, you know, I just grab 792 and I start adding it on my calculator. My calculator doesn't have the repeat action button. It's going to take me a while. I think it takes up to 19 or something like that. Well, it has to end with an 8, so it would either be 4 times 792 or... 9 or 14 or 19, you'd get it eventually. But, uh, okay, so he found uh, a multiple of 792 that ends in 48. And uh, so, because he realized pretty quickly, and a lot of people uh, can realize this pretty quickly, the first little bit, this 88663311, and you'll notice this if we go back and take a look at all the divisibility rule stuff, the fact that the 8s and the 1s add up to 9 and the 6s and the 3s add up to 9 mean it has no impact on the divisibility of the of uh, the whole thing being a multiple of 9. Okay, So the whole thing's a multiple of 9 if and only if this part, the last 6 digits, is a multiple of 9. And similarly, because we've got the same number repeating, these guys, and we saw this, cancel out when you do the alternating sum. So again, this part has no impact. The whole number is divisible by 11 if the last six digits are divisible by 11. And that's a nice uh, thing to work out. And then, of course, S is the only thing that helps me figure out if I'm a multiple of 8 or not. So you can just look at PQRS48. The 8s, the 6s, the 3s, the 1s, they didn't really impact anything. And so if you just start looking for multiples of uh, 792, and there's lots of ways to go about it, you could even use some of our divisibility rules uh, that we've had before, you know, the, the things that we worked out and the different possibilities for P plus Q plus R plus S. You could use all that to help speed things along. Or you can just say, I'm pretty sure it's 19. I'm just going to double check. 792 times 19. Yeah. 15,048 is 792 times 19. So I happen to have one possibility. Here's the case where... P is 0, Q is 1, R is 5, S is 0. And that is one of the possibilities. It's, uh, the sum of the numbers is 5. So it's uh, I took this one and I paired it up with this one. Okay? And that is actually the lowest one, but you don't necessarily have to find that one. But now, okay, I've got one of them. Uh, how can I get the next one, or how can I get the one before it? Okay. So, for example, maybe you didn't find that one. Maybe you found uh, 54648, which happens to be 792 times 69. So you, do, you just stumble around, or you, you use informed guessing or, or any of these patterns to, to get a possibility. What do you do to get other ones? Okay. So I've got, I've got one multiple of 792 that ends in 48. How do I get other ones? Because I'd like to be able to count them up, because that's, that's all we really have to do is count the number of ways you can do this and have it be a multiple of 792. Okay. So what do we do? We've got one of them. And so imagine we had one of them, uh, 5, 4, 6, 4, 8, and I want to get the next multiple of 792 that ends in 
four eight. So the difference between these two needs to be some multiple of seven nine two. If it's not, then since this one's multiple seven nine two, this one wouldn't be. Right? We want the the next one. So we've got to keep the the four eight here. So whatever we're adding on needs to end in two zeros. So what's the smallest multiple of 792 that ends in two zeros? And again, you can bust out the calculator. 792 and add 792 and add 792, but it's going to be a while. Instead, we could remember our factors. Okay? How do you end in zero, zero? Well, you've got to be a multiple of 100. 792 doesn't have any multiples or any factors of five, but it does have a bunch of factors of two. So it's a multiple of four, actually. So if I've got factors of 4 and I have no factors of 5, how can I, what do I need to add to make a 100? 25. So we can actually reason our way to say, well, k should be 25 at minimum. And when you do that, 792 times 25, I forget what it is, it's uh, 19800. So if I've got 1, the next one, the next smallest uh, multiple of 792 that ends in 48 is, one th uh, is 19,800 away. So if I take the, the 54848 or 54648 and I add on 19800, zero, zero, I get 74448. And I can divide that by 792 and look at that, it's 94 times 792. Okay? Uh, 94 times 792. This one here that we happen to find is 69 times 792. And how do you go between those numbers? 25. So if I wanted to go to the one before it, because maybe I don't find the smallest one, maybe I just find one of them, I can subtract a 25. Right? I can subtract a 25, and uh, we can get uh, 44. And we can subtract a 25 again, and we can get 19 times 792, and that one is the smallest. And that's this one. If you try and oops, if you try and subtract another twenty-five, you'll get too small. Okay. So now I can slowly start to work out all the possibilities that end with four eight that are multiples of seven nine two, and and we can keep going. So we go from nineteen seven nine two to well, what's the biggest one? And if your calculator is one of those, mine sadly isn't, where you can just take. You know, your 15048 and add on 19800 zero, zero, and keep pressing the equal sign. Sadly, mine will not do. Uh, your number will keep going. You just keep going until you get too big a number, until you get beyond um, six digits, PQRS48. Okay? Now, suppose my calculator doesn't do that. So, uh, what could I do? Well, I could take 1 million, which would be the sort of first seven digit number. I could possibly have, and divide it by 19800. Zero, zero. And I'll get about 50. Right? So, you know, that's, I mean, we know that's the answer, but that doesn't necessarily mean that that's the answer. Okay? But I'm thinking, I'm looking at about 50 times 25 add on 19. So I'm looking at, uh, at the very far end, around a million, I should be looking at 1269 times 7, uh, 792. And if I multiply that out on my calculator, I realize that that does end in 48, but it's a little too big. So let's go one, one before that. Let's subtract off 25. So 1244 times 792. And I see that that is four digits and then a 48. So that one's allowed, which is fantastic. Absolutely fantastic. Okay, so there we go. So now I know 1244 from 19 up to 1244 is my range. How many numbers are in this range? Okay, so 1244 minus 19, but we're not going up by one each time, we're going up by 25 each time. Okay. So 1244 minus 19 is 1225 divided by 25, and I get 25. I've, I've done something wrong here. 1244 minus 19. Uh, 
and I get 49. There we go. I was wondering what's, what I was doing wrong. Pressing the wrong button on my calculator. 49, which is great. And you might say, aha, 49 is the answer. Right? Now, if you look, 49 isn't a possibility, but 48 is, 50 is as well. How do I know which one's right? Well, for the same reason that if I asked how many numbers are between 1 and 6, you don't just do 6 minus 1 and get 5. There's not 5 numbers here. Whatever you do, you take the, the biggest number, you subtract the smallest number, and then you add on 1 to account for the end point you don't count. You go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And then you add on 1 for the one you started with. So for the same reason, we're going to add on 1 as well, and we can get 50. Okay? Now, whether or not you think that's a little cleaner, I like the casework that I did earlier. But if you're someone who just wants to jump in, find a multiple of 792 and, and work your way through that, there are still good things to, to learn here. Now, how you find your first number, you know, you can guess and check if you add 792 quite nicely. It doesn't take that long. As I say, the shortest, the smallest one is 19. Okay? Or you could use a little bit of the reasoning we had back here, but maybe not all of it. Maybe you think this is too many cases, too much work, and that's okay. But you use it to find one. And then you ask, well, how can I go, how can I find the next one that ends in 48? How can I find the one before? And you use your reasoning to find the 25. And then you say, well, what would be the biggest one? We took a guess. We weren't right. So we went to the one before it, and that turned out to be the highest we can have that has four digits and ends in 48. And there we go. So either way, we get our answer of E50. Uh, and... Yeah, that's that's it. So I'm I'm about done talking about 24. It's it's been a long video. I don't think either way is particularly nice or quick. I mean, the, the I like I like the casework because I think it's very orderly. But I think probably if you were just jumping into it, finding one copy of 792, depending on how easy that was, the second method I showed you might be might be the faster one. But uh, me and a bunch of the other people that, that I talked to, we, we all agree that uh, 24 probably should have been 25. We're going to take a look at 25 for the 2019 paper in the next video. So if you'd like to, come join me for that next time.